So you bought your first orchid or you were gifted with your first orchid and that magically multiplied. Now you probably have more than you can count. So in this video, I'm going to go over how you can keep an adequate orchid setup, how much that costs, how you can adapt it to your environment. I'm going to go over my setup here, but my setup is in my home office and I will give you a quick zoom around to show you where I work, my normal work. I had to adapt that to keep my orchid Orchids. Hi, I'm Amanda Matthews and thank you so much for watching my video at Orchidaria where I share my tips of how to grow orchids indoors because my outside climate isn't that great for orchid care. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is find the correct lighting. If you don't have the correct lighting, your orchid will not bloom. Most of us will start out with a Phalaenopsis orchid. Now these are medium light. So that means that they do not like bright light directly on them, except for the morning sun rays for about two to three hours. If you have only a few orchids, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to each room in your house and you're going to see how many hours of morning sun does this get? Now that will be only the east facing window. The south facing window, if you're in the northern hemisphere, will be the hottest of all and that will influence the temperatures, which I'll get into a little bit here. So it might have decent sun, but the temperatures are probably going to be a little too high unless you have a high temperature orchid. The north facing window probably will not get any sun at all. The west facing window is usually the rays come through the afternoon and will cook your orchids. So try to look for that east facing window that gets that morning sun. If you don't, you're going to need to provide a shelf like this with artificial lighting. Now there are several different artificial lights and I made a whole video which you can watch up here about that. Then I have this light right here which was actually cheaper and it comes with a remote control which I can control the percentage of light and how many hours it has a timer on it. It's dimmable. It, you can arrange it to the height that you want it above your orchids. If you get a light like this one, you'll want to position it according to the watts. If you have a thousand watt light above your orchid, you'll want to keep that about five to seven feet away from your orchid or, or high up off your orchid. If not, that light will sunburn your leaves. That is going to illuminate an area of 12 by 12 feet. It goes down sequentially, for example, if you have a 500 watt light, you're going to want to keep that from three to five feet above the top of your orchid. And it's going to illuminate around eight by eight feet. And if you have a 250 watt light, you'll want to keep that from one to three feet above your orchid. And it's going to illuminate about five to five square feet. So it's all dependable. You can also get fluorescent lights and put them under each rack. I don't do that just because I found that this setup was actually cheaper for me. And you can see that in the link below. It was just awesome because even though I don't need the thousand watt light because this area right here is not that big and it's actually very close to my orchids, I don't need that. So I can dim it down to actually 10% of what that should be. So check those out for lighting, but you will need light for your orchid and that is fundamental. The next thing you'll need is shelving. So if you have one orchid, that is fine. If you have more, you will need a shelving. And I suggest you get one that is adjustable. You'll find out pretty soon that you probably have one or two orchids that you really, really like. And soon you'll have like 500 of them, all of the same genus or species. So you won't have that fluctuating height of a really tall cymbidium, which mine are down there, and a small, shorter mini columnia, which are back here. So with that adjustable height, you can move that around. How to place your orchids on a shelf like this if you have a high intensity light. The first shelf here is going to be your, your high light orchids. The second shelf are going to be medium light orchids and your lower shelf is going to be the low light orchid. The next thing you'll need is a humidifier and I will show you mine. This one, uh, say hi. 
here blow some air for people to see okay so the <laughs> But I don't need a huge humidifier for my home environment. I mean, I read a really small one because this space right here isn't that big. And also I have all my equipment in here that I actually use for work. So my computer, my camera, my, my podcast microphone, I have everything in here that, and my lights. So if I keep that humidity too high, it's going to really crash. I have a carpet and it's drywall. So you have to take that into consideration when you get a humidifier. A trick that I do have though, is that I keep other household plants in here because I don't want this humidifier running on high all the time, a lower percentage. So a trick to increase that humidity is to keep other household plants in here and ferns are awesome for that. If you can get a fern, I have a peace lily and I have a couple others. Keep other plants in your space because plants that are grouped together will tend to hold that humidity in and you won't have to lose your drywall in your carpet. There is a whole article on Orchidaria about humidifiers if you're actually wanting one and you can go through. There are four types of humidifiers which you can see right here what they are. You need to buy one that will fit into your environment. What's best for you? This one, the air that comes out is neither hot nor cold. So I do have a cool mist humidifier for my Mastavalias and Draculas, which will keep the temperature cool because it will blow out cool air. So you need to keep that in consideration too. That cost me $35, but they can range from a little bit cheaper to a lot more expensive. Another thing that you're going to need to keep your setup and a lot of people miss this is an overhead fan. Since I'm in my home office, my fan works constantly. In winter, I have it programmed where it will push the hot air down. And in summer, I change that direction so it will pull the cool air up. So you need to keep your fan on constantly. Orchids that sit in a room with no air circulation, they will get bacteria problems. They will get fungus problems. Their roots are going to be more prone to but all kinds of diseases. So keep that fan on constantly. And I mean, day and night. If you do not have an overhand fan, you can buy little bitty fans. For example, in this terrarium that I'm setting up, but I have my filler plants in and I'm still working on it, but I will put a even like a computer fan, a CPU fan, and this one is huge. This is four inches. You can actually get them down to two inches. This one cost me $14, but you can buy them really, really cheap. This one here I picked up at a grocery store. I mean, I don't think it costs more than $5, but as long as you have something on your orchids to keep them circulating, if you only have one orchid, make sure it's displayed where it plays where there's lots of air around it and you won't need a fan that's on this much. One, ah, oh, I just broke it. <laughs> one thing that is good for your orchid care is a hygrometer, which tells you both the temperature and the humidity in your area, because some places you won't even need a humidifier. The natural air humidity, the relative humidity in your environment already is perfect for that. And that's why I get into this because you need to know what temperature your orchids are. A Phalaenopsis will like it a little hotter. Some orchids like Cattleya also like it a little hotter. Other orchids, not so much. They want a cool environment. Like on Cidiums, they're gonna want a little cooler environment than a Phalaenopsis. Orchids are divided into three temperatures. The cool, which will go from 45 to 65 in winter. That's the lowest that they will tolerate. If you go any lower than that, they'll start to have serious problems. A intermediate orchid, the lowest it will go in winter is 55 to 60. And the warm growing orchids, if you get anywhere lower than 65, they will not bloom for you. That's why it's important to have a thermometer 
And for example, right now it's 77.4 in mine and 67 relative percent relative humidity. So that is kind of high, but of course I've been holding it right next to my humidifier. So bought this one for $9.99, so $10. So they're not that much and they are important. One thing that you'll need to take into consideration when you set up an, a space like this, these orchids I do not take to the sink. I water them on this shelf here and on the last shelf, which is the fourth, I have a huge Tupperware pan so that they will catch all the drips and all the splashes that I make when I water. Now this setup with the Tupperware underneath is only ideal if you know your orchids do not have diseases. If you have a sick orchid, you will want to water that separately. So you'll want to take it to the sink. You can also set up humidity trays underneath each shelf of these, but I found that humidity trays are a little bit expensive, especially for my budget. So I stay away from them. I just use the Tupperware. And those orchids that actually like a lot more humidity, I soak them. I take them off and soak them separately. So you'll need to get some kind of drip system as long as they're not sitting in a tray of water that's fine and I just take my Tupperware out every time after I water and drain that and use that with the other plants in here. So that's my setup and I want you to take those tips of and adapt it to your environment so that your orchids can grow the best. I am working on a video because I set up an orchid terrarium with Mastavalias and Draculas and I will be getting that out in the next couple weeks because that is a whole different setup because their humidity requirements are different, their temperature requirements are different, their light <laughs> requirements are different. So that's what you really need. Group your orchids together according to their temperatures, light, um, humidity preferences and keep those all in one place. In all, I thank you for watching and don't stop your orchid care here. I suggest these two videos. If this video helped, please give it a like and I hope to see you in the comments below. Happy cultivating.